Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. Now, today we have another pokey to rehouse. And this is the Pisotheria Metallica, or the Gooty Ornamental. She is in here. This is another fresh spider into the room. Uh, we've had a few of these now, so we've, we're basically, um, we're doing videos on the ones that we intend on keeping. And this girl is one of them. She will be staying here and she will be joining our um, breeding program already for next year. So uh, we are gonna house her in exactly the same size enclosure for now. She's gonna go in there. We just wanna spruce it up give us a chance to have a good look at her and we can have a chat about her and see see what she's up to. Um, so, nice and simple, very easy. We're using our normal potting compost mix here. Now we have been asked a number of different questions about our rehouses and that is, why are we no longer using the beastie mix? And the simple reason is, I just haven't been out and collected any. No other reason other than that. We have just been so, so busy. Um, we always use uh, the cheap potting compost as well. And then we, um, we mix that with a little bit of cocoa fiber and what have you. So we still do that. And that works really, really well. And um, let me just put that in there. Give her somewhere to hide. Um, so we use that, and then we used to mix a bit of that in sometimes with our pot in, with our um, beastie mix. But I just haven't had time to get out there and have a look and grab any. So hence why we've gone back more to the potting compost um, as a substrate. Now it works perfectly well. It does a really really good job. They both do. Um, but that is the only reason we've not been using it. Convenience. It's just convenience, yeah, that is it, exactly, convenience. So we're going to stick our, we'll put a little bit of moss in the front here. And we're going to have a little bit up in the corner here, just to fill it up. And then we're going to get our glue, put our water bowl on. Where's my, oh, there's my sprayer. Grab a bit of glue. Now, do be careful when you're using this stuff because it does get very, very hot. Right, bear with me. I need to put this on here. Once I get it in position, I can glue it to my finger, which is exactly what I've just done. <laughs> You see, I was very conscious of trying to give you guys a view and in the process managed to glue it to my finger. And not give us a view. And as I was saying, be very careful because it's very, very hot and it will burn your finger. So, there you go. Nice and simple. Very, very easy. Now, what we're looking at here is basically, a. this is really just a simple maintenance enclosure. So, for any of our spiders that are not being used for breeding at this moment in time. We quite often move them over to simple maintenance enclosures, just like this. And this is how we do it. Very, very simple, very easy. Takes seconds in which to make them up. But what it does do, as long as we can cover them, give them security by giving them somewhere to hide, we can have a little bit of moss in there, keeps them nice, looks, looks nice, and also helps with our humidity. This is all we require as a maintenance enclosure. Now, one of the other questions that we've been asked a lot about is why are we no longer using the clay balls in the bottom for our humid loving spiders? And the simple reason is, is the main reason we use the clay balls is because we normally use live plants. And with the live plants, it's good for them if they can actually root down, but their roots aren't in the water. They're not in in wet soil so by having the clay balls it means that the roots can come down and then they can literally filter out and they stay not dry but healthy um, which means that we can soak it they can get a drink and then the access water goes down into the clay balls and then eventually it 
evaporates back up through and it means that we can maintain our plants so much better and healthy. If we put plants in this as it is with no drainage layer, some plants will survive but many of them don't like it and we have to be much more thorough with how we how we water it's, it's harder to maintain our plants. So that is why at the moment we're not using any clay balls because at the minute we're not in a position where we want to be using um, live plants as such. As I say, some of them will survive and they're perfectly fine, but a lot of them are a little bit finicky and they like to have um, sort of dry, airy roots. You don't really need the backup for over watering, do you? Because you're all right like that. No, no. I mean, that is the other aspect of having the clay balls is the fact that you can overwater if that is to happen it's not such a big issue with the clay balls. But once you you get used to it and you can maintain it, there's no reason why you should ever overwater. But it's always there as a backup. So if you're a beginner and you feel like, oh, you know, you've maybe a spider made you jump and you poured half a jug of water in there, you know, it's not the end of the world because your clay balls will hold that. Your spider's up above it, not in any danger, um, and it will evaporate through. You just, if that happens, you just don't do any more watering until that water has dissipated away. Right, we're now going to have a look at this. Now, we often, let's have a little chat about pokies because we are often told that um, they're very, very light sensitive. You see this over the Facebook groups time and time again, that these spiders are light sensitive. You'll see up on the racks here, all of our spiders here, there's lights above them. And if we come over here, don't go too close. If we come over here, you can see these are Metallicas in here. And they're all Metallicas through here. These are Metallicas over here as well. You know, these are Mirandas in here as well. We've got Mirandas, Metallicas. There's all sorts. And they're all out. Look, it's like they're sunbathing. So they like to come out in the daytime. It is a little bit of a myth to say that they are light sensitive. They're not. If they're kept in a dark, gloomy thing, and then you shine a torch on them, they're gonna be light sensitive. But if you house them like we do here, they will get used to it and they will come out. And many of our spiders, the vast majority of our spiders will sit out in strong light. So it's very, very good. So what we're gonna do now, we are gonna have a look at this girl. We don't know what she's like temperament wise, so we, they're all a bit different. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try and break away this bit of web. And then we're gonna try and see if we can't do, get her out. Can you stop that tank with the one you've just done so that I can come over? Um, I can do, hold on. Got a lovely fresh malt there. Right, what do you, well, we'll leave this one here and I'll pull this out. So we'll put that there, and then we can put this one on the end, like so. And then hopefully, you guys can get a good look at what's going on. And then hopefully, I can lift this up out of the way. See her in there? Is on that bit of wood, look at that. So what we're gonna do now, we are gonna try and lift her out on the piece of wood. So in this situation, there's no reason for us to try and catch cut this spider. Much, much better if we can bring her out on the piece of wood that she's actually on. So here we go. We've already broken away the web that joined this side to this. That's what all this is here. Now, if you look in the bottom here, we can see in the bottom there, this web here is still attached, so we need to break that away from the piece of wood. And then we need to break it from this corner as well. Because if we lift the wood out and that is attached, it's gonna pull all that up and make her jump. And we don't want her jumping because if she jumps, she might well just run straight up my hand. So what we're gonna do, very, very gently, make sure you've got a good grip of the piece of wood. Now, let me just pull this down. 
you notice we're keeping the wood the same way. I'm keeping one eye on her. You won't see her for the minute. Because what we need to do, this plant, before it died, has grown into this. All right, there we go. We are going to keep, keep the wood exactly the same angle as she was sat on it. And by doing that, we are going to keep her nice and happy. You see? So what we can do now is we can tilt it very, very gently. Nice and gently. If she runs up this piece of wood, she will end up on my hand. See how she's backing away? So we need to be a little bit careful. You notice there, uh, considering she's actually, that malt in there looked quite fresh. She's quite brown here. Maybe that was an old malt that's just managed to stay intact. See that beautiful blue colouring? This is what makes these guys uh, super popular. Well, let me we'll try and get I'll we'll try and get a picture and then we'll try and get some light on her as well. Uh, where do you think you're going, Mrs? What we're gonna do, we're gonna tilt it back so that she's upright. I'll be very, very careful. You remember, we don't want to be wearing this spider. You see how her colour has changed now in the light? There we go. So let me just try and get a picture now. She's going to go underneath the bark. Just waiting for her to settle down a little bit. All right. So now we've done that. Can you get the light on her again? She's really, the colours aren't showing up. It's such a shame. Well, we're going to see how she reacts now, because our spiders are used to the light, this one isn't. So as you can see there now, she's in a decent position, so she's quite comfortable. And what we're doing is we are tilting the wood in such a way that she feels like she's almost upright. So we just need to be careful. Take the light away, let her settle down again. There we go, back on again. You see, you see how she's like she's hunkering down now? So she's trying to disappear. Looking absolutely beautiful. Legs are so pretty. Aren't they? Stay just still. Now this spider here is what I would class, I'm going to need both hands in a second. Okay, yeah. I'll come out and, yep. Right, this, this spider is, in, for a Metallica, I would say she's probably about middle-aged. Um, and this is due to the, the colouring. She's not absolutely vibrant blue. But she's quite a strong blue. But you'll see also in her carapace, she's quite grey. She's got a little bit of a black going on there. You see the markings are very, very nice. Her abdomen is quite brown. Now we have got that um, malt in there, which suggests that it isn't particularly old. So I would say she's relatively fresh. So as they get older, they lose some of that vibrancy. But it does take a little while. Um, 
we found with these that um, in terms of lifespan, we are looking at around about eight to nine years. Um, and then they start to lose an awful lot of color. And, uh, and you're getting right near the end of their actual lifespan then. Um, it's something that we've um, touched on before with ages of spiders. Much of the literature, to, uh, literature that we see states that these guys live on for 20 years and what have you. I'll be honest with you, I think it's all a load of rubbish. Um, you know, many of these spiders, and especially in captivity, I've got a theory that with many of these spiders, if, if they are to produce maybe two or three sacks within a lifetime, they are probably done really, really well. Um, I don't think they're producing every year. So I think their actual lifespan, especially in the wild, will be shorter um, because of predation, um, just being kicked out of their home, you know, with the amount of stuff that we do as humans, these are being displaced all of the time. Now, all of the pokies now have, um, are what we class as medically significant, which means that they've got a venom that is going to cause you trouble. It's going to give you a serious amount of discomfort. Um, you don't, don't want to be playing around with these guys. You can get used to handling them in terms of like how we are handling them, but on no certain uh, circumstances would we attempt to pick this spider up. If she was to bite me, the implications of that bite are going to be severe. So we have to be very, very careful. Now we can still deal with these spiders, as many of the other spiders as well that are in the same sort of category. We can deal with them all without handling them and in a really stress-free way, which is what we're doing now. This spider is not under any stress. We've seen no threat display. She's not feeling uncomfortable in any way. And this is what we need to maintain. Now, if she was to um, turn around and literally fly up this piece of wood, our first reaction would be to drop the piece of wood. You notice it's only a couple of inches off of the desk here. We can drop this without fear of hurting our spider. It's not a problem. And for our own well-being and our own safety, it is much better that we drop the piece of wood than we get a bite. One of the things that's, um, that's not mentioned very much, and I think is quite misunderstood in terms of, um, I'll rest that on there, in terms of um, venom, is even once you recover from your bite, you will have quite often discomfort in that area for the rest of your life. And we see this a lot with snake bites and things like that, where people have been bitten, they've saved the limbs or whatever, and they still feel much pain years and years later. And this is one of the things that I never understand why people take chances in handling these. The internet is full of people having these walking up and down their arm, macular arters, feather leg baboons, OBTs, all these different spiders that are all medically significant. If it bites you, there's a good chance you will suffer for the rest of your life. It is not a happy experience. So we should always pay top attention to making sure that we don't actually get ourselves in a position where we're likely to get bitten. Like I say, if this was to change now, we've got a couple of options. We can literally just drop it, or we can just hold on and hope she just goes underneath. Because when we know how our spiders behave, quite often or not, if she wants to leave this point on the log, she will just want to come around the back side of it where it's dark. So if we just sort of stay steady, we can allow her to do that. It all depends on your confidence and how you feel. But you're better off avoiding any of that at all cost. So what we're going to do now, we are going to move her. We've had a lovely good look at her. She's very, very chilled out. Now we often hear about these spiders being, um, you know, super sort of frisky and what have you. But she's proving to be really good. 
Now I'm going to have to come around the side here now. So what you can do actually is you can come around here. And then what we're going to do, we are going to come around here. And we are going to try and walk her into here. So right, what we're going to use, we're going to, we've got the full size of the log here. We're going to use it like that. And we're going to get it right up to the edge. You see that? So now, hopefully, she will go forward. She won't put the lid on. No, we're not going to worry about the lid for now. We're going to use the full length of the brush. Very, very gently touch her. There you go. We've made contact. As you can see there, this is a point where she may turn round. So what we do is we lift the back leg slightly. You see how she flicked her toe? Here we go. As you can see there, her body language is saying she's thinking about turning. So what we do, here we go. We don't want to go in on the back. Now we've got a half and half. We can allow the log to drop a little bit. There we go. So now we've got that out of the way. Now if we want, we can... We could have put the lid on in the beginning. Um, as camera lady said, it wouldn't have made any difference. If you're um, a little bit unsure about how you want to um, go ahead with these kinds of rehousings, by all means, take every precaution to make sure that your spider stays where it's supposed to do. For our purposes now, as you've seen just then, camera lady can come around and go over the top. She can get a really good view without the glass being in the way we can get some really, really nice images and hopefully show you guys what a wonderful spider it actually is. <laughs> She's out of focus right now. This is where we use the zoom. I am using a zoom, babe. See all there? What a pretty spider. So this one will join our, um, see her uh, our breeding program. Let me put the lid on. I'm just going to close that up. I'll spin around. Not a lot to see on the back. Well, she's not like some of the others where no, I've got really no, she's um not got the, uh, the colouring of things like the regalis. They got a little bit of yellow in them, but nowhere near as much. Yeah. You also notice that the regalis has the band on the abdomen. These have nothing at all. They're one colour all the way through. All nice and dark. So very, very different. In actual fact, um, it is actually a real art to be able to identify um, some of the pokies from photographs because some of them do look quite a lot alike. And the best way to actually tell which is which is to have an underside shot of them because the underside is where often the differences are and we can see that. Me personally, I still struggle to tell them apart. So it's always good to have a label, you know, if you've got a label, it helps. And then hopefully that label's correct as well. But um, but yeah, just out of interest, they are quite difficult to, um, to tell apart some of them. Um, now in terms of care, all of the pokies can be kept pretty much exactly the same. We get asked, you know, is there any differences between them? We keep all of ours exactly the same. Um, the most important thing we found is, as we've said before with the regalis, their resting area where they hide away needs to be dry. They do like that area dry, but the rest of it can be nice and moist um, and damp. You know, it needs that, that humidity there. Uh, but generally speaking, Keep them a little bit on the drier side if you're worried, and they will be absolutely fine. Now, a female like that, she will be looking at um, eating adult dubia roaches. And as you can see, her abdomen is already a good size. And we will definitely see how she, um, how she goes on. I think we'll see if we can't get another. There we go. Now it's important that we um, we breed these guys in captivity because 
They have now become, um, or have done for some time now, all the pieces of the area are on the, um, on the CITES list now. So we have trouble actually moving them around. You have to follow certain criteria now to, to take them from one country to another. So before we used to be able to move them around quite easily, but now they are CITES regulated. So we need to be able to prove where they were bred, where they come from and so on. So it's important now that we breed them ourselves in captivity so that the UK market doesn't need to be importing them from elsewhere. We can breed our own and then we can have them within the UK. So it's a really important um, genus of spiders to actually start cultivating in a captive bred situation here in the UK. We bred these a number of times now. Um, and as you've seen up on the shelves, we have got quite a few of uh, Metallicas uh, along with other pieces of theria. So they are a wonderful, wonderful spider and they really do need as much work as possible. Right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. She was very, very well behaved. And um, again, maybe we've just busted a few myths and uh, shown that these aren't quite as scary as they're made out to be. All right. Don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spider. And I'll see you soon, guys.